Hello everybody, I'm Derek Arden and welcome to Monday Night Live, live and uncut chat show. Today we've got a very, very important subject to discuss and we have an expert on the subject, Paul Coleman. Paul, who's just returned from the Caribbean, where he's been working for 10 years undercover, not undercover, but covering issues like fraud and money laundering, working as a compliance expert so uh welcome paul a couple of things we'll say um there's been all sorts of controversies about fraud and money laundering i don't understand why lots of uh, police areas are put into into fraud but hardly anything on money laundering and that responsibility seems to have been given to the banks the lawyers and anybody that uh, accepts cash paul thanks for joining us uh, we've got some slides. I'll hand over to you now to take over and I'll put it on slide view. Thanks for joining us. Okay, thank you. Derek, let me just share my screen and then we can start. It's yeah, we've got it up there. And for those of you that don't know that are watching it live, you can move the screen to look at the slides by that little button in the middle. I'll be doing for doing that for the right. people that are watching this on YouTube. Right. Thank you. Well, thanks, Derek, for allowing me to come and talk about this uh, fascinating topic, I must say. But uh, um, what it was prompted in a way, because you you put the, the point about um, fraud and money laundering in a different different way. One time when we were talking, when, when you very simply said, everybody's heard of fraud, but not many people have heard of, of uh, money laundering. And so, and I, would, I, I must say, I was a little bit, well, taken aback by that. But of course, I'm dealing with money laundering or anti-money laundering every every day. But uh, if I let me just move this over to here, All right? So, where well, that that prompted the the thought process about well, how, well, let's let's really sort of lift the lid on it, and we can see where it fits. So, start with a couple of definitions. Fraud is a deception intended for final financial or personal gain, whereas money laundering is concealment of the origins of illegally obtained property. So what I'd like to do is just mention, before we move on to the next slide, but, but uh, the key words in there is fraud is about deception. It's about deceiving people to do something that they they wouldn't normally do, particularly in the financial financial world. Now, money laundering, concealment is a key word. It's the hiding of the money. And we all know, well, most of us will have known from watching cowboy movies, whatever, 40, 50 years away, ago, was that the man who robbed the bank in the town, he went up in the hills and he dug a hole and he put the money in there, um, hope, hoping that sort of 10 years later he would remember where he put it. But that was the whole point. It was to distance the money from the crime and from him. And then he would go back and eventually be able to spend it. So that and the other point on this is it, uh, illegally obtained property, because that's the that's the basis of the law that it doesn't mean it's just cash. It's not money, it's property. So that's that is the so one of the most common ways of uh, laundering money is purchasing of assets such as houses and such. That's what is very keen. We'll come to that a little bit later on. But it is uh, property. It, it sort of hinges back to when uh, many, many years ago, they used to talk a lot about receiving stolen goods and the man in the Pope selling something to you. Uh, but anyway, that's what they are. That's that's the two definitions. So let's, what's, what about a few numbers? And it's quite interesting, this, that one... The card spend in the United Kingdom is one trillion wow. pounds in 2022. That's enormous. But what hit me the greatest about this is there's 28 billion card transactions in a 12 months period, 2022. So you think about, you know, we all think we use our credit credit cards a lot. Well, now we know why it's to get to 28 billion. But the card fraud. 556.3 million loss per, for the in 2022. Now, this authorized push payment is a more emerging fraud with cards. 
it's 485 uh, million there as a as a loss now let me tell you one example because i was a victim of that um when i was in turks and caicos my i noticed two transactions well i didn't the, how it started was i couldn't get into my um uh, my um, online banking and so I rang them up and said, and they said, "Oh well, have you have you been using your card recently?" And I said, "Well, you know, I, I couldn't really remember." I said, "Well, as normal, but nothing else." The story was there was two transactions of five five thousand um, dollars had gone out of my account in the last couple of days, and I said, "Well, they're not my transactions." And she said to me, "Well, you've approved it." So. I said, well, no, I didn't approve it. I didn't, not, didn't approve that amount. Now, thankfully, one of the payments, the, the the more recent payment, they managed to recall. And so I didn't have any a battle with that. But what had transpired, because I knew that the, uh, the detective in charge of financial fraud in Turks and Caicos, and what he said was they had established, the police had established, that there'd been a lot of activity on my account my, on the settings of my uh, online banking. And it they changed the email and the address and the phone number. And I said, well, I haven't been doing that. And they'd actually, so they'd hacked the, the fraud. Ha they, they'd hacked my account. And we had a system there, which we still had, still have, where I had every bank transaction would come onto my email and say, so I could just see it, to see you know as instantly. I you know it was it was as instant as I would go to the to the supermarket, and I, by the time I've driven home, I had this email, and, and I was only five minutes away. So the point was, the email had been redirected to the fraudsters, and of course they got this email, and then 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 um, authorized it. I didn't know what that that was happening, but all I can say is I had a real, real job to persuade the bank, even though I said that I was, uh, uh, you know, that well, they called me out and uh, and I'd said, well, I didn't do it, I didn't do it, and uh, I think it was only because a I knew the the in, uh, police in charge of financial crime, and secondly, of course, I was I had been the bank manager of that bank. When I was first in uh, in in Turks and Caicos, so I managed to sort of at least appear to be a bit more, uh, you know, that I was you you know that I hadn't done it, and they trusted me. But that was a bit scary, I must admit. Um, so and this so this authorized push payment is all about instant payment when you do online, and you do through your phone, and you want to send money. I send money to my children and whatever. It's instant. It's it happens very quickly. It's gone. You can't recall them at all. And and that's the, the fraudsters are really very agile in getting themselves how to do that uh, and for them to be ahead of the game. That's quite scary, Paul, because that could be a large amount, couldn't it? Because they've done the uh, done the second authorization, presumably on 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 your on your phone that they've hacked and transferred. Yeah, exactly. And. Uh, well, well, um, I thought it was a lot of money anyway, five thousand um, dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Derek might not be might not might not be to to, <laughs> to to you people living in London, but it was a lot of money for me in Turks and Caicos. But anyway, point, point taken. It was it was uh, scary. Yeah, no, I was I was thinking, you know, we tap on up to a hundred pounds, don't we? But I mean, that's probably not much of a loss. But when they're hacking into your account, yeah. That. Yeah, it was very um, ingenious, really, to get that far to hack in the bank. Uh, to okay, Paul, let's uh, let's move to the next right. area. Right. So the next, just to say, well, what what about money laundering? What are the what are the numbers here? Well, of course, money laundering. Nobody sends returns in, so it's it's a guesswork. The, the United Nations produce these figures, but it's been like this for many many years. Two between two and five percent of global gross domestic product, which which equates to between $800 billion to $2 trillion. That's a huge amount of money. 
It's absolutely mm -hmm. enormous. And if even, I mean, whilst it's an estimate by the United Nations, the point is, of course, even if it's half wrong or half right, it's still a lot of money. Exactly. So now what's the difference? Where do we get the difference from? Um, and this is where I have always got this really and, and said to myself, well, yeah, fraud is 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 only part of the of the area of of where of money laundering in effect, because fraud is it's one of twenty one what we call predicate crimes. They're crimes that because of the proceeds of crime uh, legislation, um, it tags on to any any normal crime like fraud, corruption, human trafficking, drug trafficking, tax crimes, and there's twenty one of them. So it means that if if someone, in, if there is a crime, so let's say corruption, it, it allows law enforcement, if they say that also they would they would investigate for the the um, money laundering, then even if you haven't been uh, convicted for the crime, you can be convicted for money laundering, and that's that opens up a whole new advantage in in. Uh, you know, in the investigation. But it, the important thing to, to remember is money laundering only happens when there is a predicate crime. So the two go together. They, they don't, they, money laundering is not an isolated activity. It is, it is linked to these 21 predicate crimes and it has enhanced. That's the idea and we'll see whether that's, uh, it's working all right a bit later on, but it enhanced the law, the the ability of law enforcement to investigate. Now, one of the differences for the the uh, the term the terminology is always follow the money. That's the most important thing. Um, that's how investigations do occur when there's financial crime. But if it's fraud, if it's fraud, what the process is, investigation, it, it gets it they find the crime, the crime, and then they see if they can that, that can lead them to the criminal. And that's pretty difficult because the criminal, the individual, has probably absconded, escaped, he might have gone um, abroad, he left the country. It is very difficult to to look at these, and now we can see why it's very difficult to solve uh, to to solve the fraud, like these people who who, who uh, hacked my bank account, to find the person actually person who's done it, given that the bulk of it is on online, so it could be done anywhere in the world. You see, now money laundering is the other way around. It's it it attaches the criminal. And you start looking at the crime. So we go back to that that situation with a predicate crime. You they are investigating, and then they start to say, "Well, okay, there's a criminal. We if if they can link that to that crime." And the point about it is, and we let me just put it on the next slide because no, we won't go that far. I'll just talk about this. Um, money laundering is about unexplained wealth and how people are acting and how how they become rich more more rich now anybody can say um they can distance themselves the criminals will dis distance themselves from the crime like just like the cowboy and taking it up into the hills but what they what is harder to do is to disguise their lifestyle because everybody who's got lots of money has a big car a big house expensive holidays, such like. They have a lifestyle, you know, with a Rolex watch, you name it. Because if they wanted if they wanted to hide that, well, what's the point of doing the crime? Everybody wants, you know, the rich people are going to, you know, they're going to live in a big house, aren't they? They're going to live with the expensive cars. So you, that lifestyle is what the, the investigators are looking at to, about the about the the person who's involved. Where have you got that wealth from? That's the big challenging question. Can you justify where you've got the wealth? And of course, what we say is there is 
many, many lies, but there's only one version of the truth. And mm -hmm. the, the, the criminal the criminal who when he when he touches the financial business, he has to explain, and we've all been through this from time to time when they go to the bank and they'll say, Tell me about, about this money, or are you buying a property? And you say, Well, where have you got the money to pay for your share if it's if you if it's part borrowed part um, your own money always asking and they and of course if it's a legitimate source it's easy there's always a trail isn't it if you inherit money from your parents you would for example there's a trail there you don't you know there's there's always going to be paperwork has to go through the courts similarly if you sell a if you sell a business after 40 years or so and get a, a huge amount of money but there's a there's a trail you don't just sell it like that do you there's you know accountants involved and everything like that yes Derek all I was just going to say it looks like governments turn the um, turn the other way when it's big money coming into the economy I was thinking of foot about football clubs in this country I was thinking about people bringing money in buying big properties in Mayfair 15 million pounds of Bramovich's was um is is that the facts people looking the other way or can't we really say on a recorded program well what I would say is that um it's it comes in through through the banking system now that's the that's the issue that it's in the banking system and everywhere now it's it's, it's gonna it's it's going to be touched on various places by whatever they're going to do with the money but the the examples that you give well there's the reasons could be that the banks aren't very aren't very uh, clear they're looking for what might appear suspicious activity there are people on the other side of the equation like lawyers and accountants and such like, who some will say they will look the other way, willful blindness, they're not doing their job correctly, or they're complicit. And they're getting a share of that money that's coming in. Now think of it, think of it through, um, the, the good example was uh, the Russian uh, people who were buying lots and lots of property in Mayfair and such like. There was an uh, there was a program on the on the television some time ago when somebody was was playing the part of the Russian, you know, who came up and he was you showed him going around a series of of real estate agents, and they were the the um, Russian guy who sort of said he had his girlfriend there, you know, he had his London, you know, girlfriend. And he said, he said to the the said to the girl, "Well, you go round and wander around and see whether you like this." And he he took the real estate agent to one side, and he and he said, and this was the live, well, not live on the TV, but this is exactly how he how he put it. He said, "Look, I hope you understand. I work for the government in Russia. Um, we keep this quiet, don't we?" And 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 he says, "But she she's gonna she's gonna live here, you know, and I'll I'll be with her when I come here." Um, so and and all of them, the estate agents said, oh, don't worry, don't tell me anything about that. I don't need to know that. Just because wow. of course the real estate agent con is is in a commission driven business and he is he gonna throw away, you know, ten million, fifteen million pound property. Sure. Yeah. Well, everyone yeah. everyone's got their price pool. I think we need to move on because the time right. the clock is ticking. Okay, okay, right. So that's so now then that we talked about this, and which is it's quite similar now. The concept of 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 the money laundering regime is that that banks are the ones in the main, but there are others now. There are lawyers and, and real estate agents and such. Are required to to inquire when they when they are doing a financial transaction. The whole. Let me just go to the next slide, which will just say. Now, this is a very simple way of of showing very very small way of showing that this is a, the, the the pattern that we the, we have that financial institutions are meant to uh, be. Uh, they report if they see anything suspicious. 
It then passes to law enforcement who do the investigating. Then it goes to the prosecutor. If the, if the law enforcement uh, can convince the prosecution that they it's worthwhile, so they, they, they prosecute it. And then it goes into the court and it's down to the judiciary to say that, well, do they understand this? Do they know what they're doing? Um, one second, please. I'm just... Right. Yeah, that's a really tricky area, isn't it? I mean, presumably it's a jury as well. I don't know. In the UK, it's probably a jury has to convict the person as well. Well, it is. And and, and the issue is, and it's, I mean, it doesn't say it's all happening like this, but if if this chain breaks from the banks, and when you think about it, the banks, they're all, they're, they're were they very busy? Do they want to, do they, how, how deep do they dig when they get large transactions? Law enforcement, they really have got, in their minds, they want to investigate the predicate crime. Sure. That's how they read up. There's a lot fewer financial investigators who would look at the money, so they'll pursue the, the, the predicate crime. Um, so it doesn't get, money laundering doesn't get um, on their radar. The prosecutor might not be sufficiently skilled, experienced, because there's not many of these uh, types of uh, money laundering prosecutions coming, having, coming, and then the judiciary. Well, do they understand it? And do they are they are they skilled enough, as you say, to, to convince um, the, a jury about that? So the final point, and this is the whole point, was of starting money laundering. As I said before, is there's there's the, all these financial transactions. And the criminal gets a huge, you know, pot of gold, big house, big car, whatever. And it's to, the confiscation is the meant to be the deterrent. But it's not worth in the in the fact of saying one percent. Now again, that's another figure that might or might not be correct. But it's not going to go be you know ninety eight percent out, is it? It's going to be. No. It, it, it's not going to be off the mark that much. So it feels, it feels feels right, Paul. Okay, yeah. uh, bearing in mind we got a little bit of time left, can we uh, move on to the post office? Right, let's have a look at this. This um, what you and I talked about, Derek. And everybody in the UK, and I'm sure even if, even that it's got through to the to the USA about the post office scandal. And um, I think we all know, but I would be very interested because I don't know the answer, quite frankly, and we we probably don't know how. It, how it's going to pan out in terms of the legal side, but is it fraud? Is it incompetence by the the, the post office, um, or is it somebody complicit? Well, why don't we ask people to put in the chat box what they think? Yeah, I'd be interested all, to know that. If it's all three. Put three. If it's uh, just the ones, the biggest, put uh, one, two, or three in the chat box, and I'll uh, I'll monitor it. I've always been interested in blowing the whistle and whistleblowers. Whistleblowers always seem to get blamed and get uh, all, into all sorts of issues by the bullies that might be doing this, which is why I feel people are really nervous about uh, whistleblowing. And we might cover that on another Monday Night Live because I know private detective uh, Godfrey Lancashire will have some views on that as well. Paul, they're coming into the chat box. You've got okay. two, or three, two or three minutes to finish this before uh, we stop the recording. Okay. I'm not seeing the chat box at the moment. I didn't get that. Oh, don't you worry about the chat box. I'll do, I'll okay. do that. Well, yeah. let me just say one point about the, the, the whistleblowing. Of course, there is pretty standard legislation that said that there should be no, no um, reference back to the to the uh, whistleblower, you know, the, 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 he's he's protected from any harm. Um, but you and you can remember, I'm sure Tim will remember that uh, one of the early earlier issues that uh, that that we had with regards to um, oh, it's, no, I can't get that message out. No, but anyway, there was a whistle, yeah, um, and. Uh, it was one of the people where it was, it was uh, President Trump. That's right. It's come back to me. President Trump, there was a whistleblower, wasn't it? In the early things, I think it was with 
as far as uh, Ukraine and Trump was trying to get um, trying to get dirt on Biden before the last election. And it was a whistleblower who blew that apart. And Trump went on and on and on and said, who's the whistleblower? He needs to be talked to. He needs to be uh, on the TV in 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 uh, and explaining why he was was telling this. Of course, that was the worst thing that would happen to any in, in the whistleblower. He's not going to do that. But no, as far as I go, as far as I know, it uh, uh, it never well. No, the, he didn't get a chance to see the whistleblower. Mm. So okay. how are we how are we off, Derek, with this? No, we're nearly out of time, Paul. I'm going yeah. to. Uh, but basically, people are saying three three and two so complicit and incompetent certainly what i've read there's a, a certainly a huge amount of issues and uh, when you read that the inspector who worked for the post office was on a bonus for the number of convictions he got i think that's a, a total disgrace and then when interviewed by the select committee blamed his number two yet that was all going on so that's another thing you talked about blowing the whistle as well jess staley the chief executive of barclays um asked for a, in, the inspectors to go in to find out who blew the whistle on him um and that he nearly lost his job over that but you know sending the boys round to your family you never know what might happen uh with these people if they're crooks it's um it's a huge issue and uh i don't know what the answer really is i had to blow the whistle once on somebody in barclays and uh, i got a lot of sleepless nights over it but uh, he admitted it so that was okay paul um we're out of time will you stay on to answer any questions yes and, sir, um, yep. By all means. And i thank you so much for a lot of uh, work and a lot of research you've done on this subject and being such an expert. Paul, you mentioned a book to me, Dirty Money. Who Who is the authors of there's that? Two, there's, two, oh. there's two authors, actually, Nicholas Gilmore and Tristram Hicks. They're both... Um, Can you hold it up? Yeah. Higher, higher, please. Yep. Higher, even higher. Pull it back a bit. That's better. Pull it back. Yep, we can Perfect. see that now. Perfect. The War on Dirty Money. Yeah, it's 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 a fascinating book about and and a lot of the the content that I've that I've gleaned um, is through that book. But some of the areas I was aware of, I mean, I was aware in my own in environment um, that uh, you know that suspicious activity reports are not the be all and end all because the, if the system breaks. It's like anything. It's it's just that possibility that if the system breaks, but clearly not all the time. But the numbers are, numbers are not as strong as we would like would hope they would be. Paul, could you hold those books up again? Because well, uh, when you did it before, uh, I had Derek in the screen, not you. What are you? Oh, because he was probably talking. Yeah. yeah the what? Sorry, up a bit. Up a bit. Ah, thank you. That's brilliant. The war on dirty money. It's on. It's on Amazon. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I nearly, I nearly spoke again in the middle of that, but Zoom will put me on the screen. Yeah. Paul Coleman, thanks for joining us. Thank Such you. A wealth of experience you have as a bank auditor uh, in the in both in the UK and also in the Caribbean, and particularly one or two of the uh, islands that uh, uh, smaller islands which is fantastic. You're now back in the UK, but still working. And I guess anyone watching this on YouTube or listening to this on Spotify can get you, contact you via LinkedIn, your LinkedIn, yes. which is usually the best way to do it now. So can I ask everybody on Monday Night Live to give Paul the usual vote of thanks in the, uh, in the normal way? Thank you, everybody. Paul Coleman, thanks for joining us on Monday Night Live. Okay, uh, I think the rec no, the recording hasn't stopped. Uh, Keith, uh, my uh, webmaster needs to cut this last bit out. <laughs>